Yes. Our next guest uh, became the most severely injured British soldier to survive the war in Afghanistan after losing both of his legs and suffering brain damage. Uh, fast forward 15 years later and Ben Parkinson has defied the odds to walk and talk again. He joins us now alongside his mum, Diane. Welcome to both of you. Welcome. Good to have you with us. So lovely to have you. Thank you for Hi. joining us. So let's oh. go back 15 years. Ben, had you always wanted to be in the army and was the army uh, in your family? Always. My, obviously my grandparents from the Second World War mm -hmm. and they used to tell me the story. Mm -hmm. I was always in the So you always knew that's what you wanted to four. do? Since you were four? Yeah. yeah. And Diane, you remember him when he was quite young, when he actually became, went into the army. He completely changed from being really lazy yeah. To like being really motivated. <laughs> what happened? I mean, I hope this happens to my son. Well, Ben's like, no one said I was lazy. <laughs> totally laid back, um, <laughs> totally um, sort of uh, non competitive, and changed into this sort of driven and, uh, and determined. And, and it's all part of this team ethic that you, you bond with, with your guys and you work for each other. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, so Diane is a mother, though, I suppose. In one respect, you're seeing this thing, like your son kind of channeling his energy into something that he loves to do. And then, of course, Afghanistan comes along and you're yeah. watching your boy go off to war. That must have been heartbreaking. Well, ben had been to Iraq for the war in 2003. Yeah. And very naive, we thought, well, that was it. You know, he's fought his war, he'll build his career now. Um, nobody really expected... Afghanistan to follow on sure. so quickly. So, Ben, let's talk about 2006. You were travelling in Afghan, a landmine exploded under the vehicle um, you were in. And from, obviously not from your memory, because I know you don't remember too much about it, but what, 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 tell us what happened after that. I have absolutely no idea. I learned more <laughs> things from me. Ben, ben um, it, he has no memory of the incident. He has no memory from quite a while before. But what we do know is that um, his, his troop members who were with him risked their lives to run into a potential minefield to save his yeah. life. And also what we do know, I was reading my notes, and you said that the fact that Ben uh, was such a, a broad guy, a fit guy, a big guy, yeah. helped him. And, and, you, and you said, which, which sort of struck me, it sort of stopped me in my tracks when I was reading it last night, that that you're glad it happened to you because if it was a smaller man, he would probably just maybe uh, bled out. Probably because I was caused most of the damage has been wrapped on the cupola, on my machine gun, and the big sand and the bar that we make. Yeah. yeah. And they took my leg your belly. Yes, yeah. gone. And, yeah. and if it had been a smaller person, Put for their chest and take on the mouth, probably. Right. Well, they am amputated both your legs to save your life. That was the, what they had to do, didn't they? And, and Diane, did can they? You... Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and, no days. And Diane, can you remember that knock on the door? What uh, happened? Yeah, um, we'd we'd been speaking to Ben and uh, earlier that day, and he'd said that he was back in Camp Bastion, and he was monging it, as they put it, waiting to come home. And then, you know, you, you think it's all done. And then at six o'clock that evening, there was a knock on the door. You could see through the door that it was a guy in uniform. And at that minute, you just know. Did you know straight away? Straight away. So did you think he had died at that point? We were told that he was very seriously injured. All we could focus on is, well, they've not said critical. Yeah. We didn't know that's not a term they use. Very seriously injured is as bad as it gets. But we were told that um, he was being brought home to be with his family when he died. So, so Dan, what's the, what, what's the process then? Sort of bring us up to speed. Because then he, presumably Ben, comes home yep. and then you have a whole different battle to, to, to your fighting. Yeah. Uh, You'd, you've got this situation where you'd closed military hospitals and you were bringing guys home with the most appalling injuries to a civilian hospital where they couldn't possibly have any experience in dealing with this kind of injury. Yeah. And you're bringing home young, incredibly fit guys. Yeah. Um, and you just don't know what to do with them. Mm. People just didn't know what to do. So, Ben, when you hear your mum talking about this, what do you think? 
I don't think anything. I'm used to it now. Used to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and do you just have happy memories of being in the Always. army? Always. Uh, there's no point in being loved by anything, is there? Yeah. And you are so then You've positive. obviously built a special stuff, but, um, and I'm sure you get that for your mother, but you, <laughs> uh, you're told you can't uh, walk and maybe not talk again. Um, but here you are talking and you've, you know, taken on these incredible challenges. Um, did you, when you were told that, what, sort of what went through your mind? And obviously there was a determination to, to make sure that, you know, you would get better and be, a, uh, you know, a, 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 and have a life. What do they know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What do they know? I mean, they can say that you're never going to... Um... Obviously they don't know any much. I think as well. Because they can't talk. Yeah. And they still walk grudges. Yeah. They still walk. And, and what are you going to do? Are you going to let it ruin the rest of your life? Or are you going to fight? Yeah. And, and obviously, Ben was going to fight. But it was this life-changing spinal surgery that kind of turned things around, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, people, when they looked at Ben, um, obviously the first thing you see is the legs. And the head injury which had affected Ben's speech. But what was really preventing him getting better was the spinal injury, which meant that over time he was becoming more and more bent. Um, they actually refer to it as a kyphosis. Yeah. And, and he was bent double. And for him to speak and for him to walk, we've got to get that corrected. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So, I mean, let's focus now on what you have done since. So 2012, you carried the Olympic torch in front of 66,000 people. Wow. I mean, you remember that? No, I don't know. <laughs> There's some pictures there. You there can you see go. some pictures oh, there. Cheers. <laughs> You've also got an Dan, MBE you, sorry, as well. Dan, you must remember that. Oh, that, that was a moment in time. That's the stuff today that, that you get once in a lifetime. You've also got an MBE, and it was presented to you by Prince Charles. My uh, mate. Is it your mate? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. So he's been really supportive, hasn't he? Yes. Of course, he's Ben's commander in chief, commander in chief of the Paris. So uh, it was quite fortunate, given what Ben said when he got his MBA, it was quite fortunate that it wasn't the Queen. That might not have gone down yeah. quite so well. Mm. Cheers, um, mate. Let's talk a little bit about the. Cheers, mate. Yeah. <laughs> talk a little bit about the book. Did you, you? You write this yourself, hook up with a writer. Well, you know, it's important to tell the story. Uh, losing the battle and winning the war. Was it? Was it? Um, what sort of experience was it, I suppose, by, by sitting down and putting... Basically, I learned everything from my pain. I got all the memories for I won none. Yeah. All the memories of my mates. So it was good to find out myself what happened. Yeah. And you've also raised so much money for charity and you've got a big, big something happening. What's happening with your... A uh, new charity, Pilgrim Bandits Charity. What are you uh, going to be doing? Uh, it's not my new charity. It's the only charity. It's the only yeah. charity. And, and where are you off to? You're going to pass you with me. <laughs> above my liberty. And also... Oh, no! When you pass you with me... Will I be you, strapped to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going to bring... about that. You're going to bring... Philip Schofield. <laughs> because do you know my, what? Philip Schofield boss, would do it. I don't care. My boss, my really, really wants it for number. <laughs> <laughs> really, really it's wants it. Get it here first. Oh, Alison <laughs> is going to jump off <laughs> Mount Everest. I can't do it. And you've heard that my really wants Philip Schofield's for number. Because <laughs> he's got to arrange. The jump. Yeah. So, well, so we the jump wait. will happen sometime with Alison and Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping from Mount Everest. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Alison, come on, Alison. Ben, thank you so much. Are we shaking on the. Oh, oh, we're not allowed. Oh, we can't oh. shake, so it might not happen. Oh, well, me. <laughs> Let me lose a bit of weight yeah. and then, then I, might, I might join you. I might join you. Thank you so much for joining us, yes. ben. ben. Thank you. And Diane. Thank, thank you. you.